Elaine, appreciate your time. Details are still pretty scant, but what do we know about the type of detention that Cheng Li would now be experiencing? Well, she apparently is being held in residential surveillance as a, at a designated location. That's the official Chinese term for it. I mean, it sounds very much like house arrest, but in fact, it is anything but. This type of detention is really secret detention. It's holding someone at an undisclosed location, um, not holding them at a regular police station. And the problem with this type of detention is that you can hold someone for up to six months and they don't have access to a lawyer. And so we're very concerned, you know, about her welfare. Um, she has apparently had one consular uh, video call, but we don't actually know, you know, what her state is or, or what her conditions are right now. Elaine, the government is understandably playing down speculation that this has anything to do with recent diplomatic tensions between Beijing and Canberra. But what is Beijing's track record when it does come to using foreigners almost as hostages as a sort of diplomacy tool? Well, yes. I mean, we don't know the exact circumstances of why she's been arrested. Certainly, it's up to the Chinese government to clarify that. Um, but we do know that Beijing does have a track record of hostage diplomacy. You know, for instance, the two Canadians who remain detained were arrested um, after the arrest of the Huawei executive in Canada. Um, so, you know, we can't really speculate on, you know, why this has happened right now. But what we do know is that in China, you know, both foreigners and locals, um, we've seen many, many people get swept up um, in, you know, these types of uh, arrests, whether it's tycoons, in some cases celebrities, journalists, human rights lawyers, you name it. And so I think it is really worrying, especially the lack of due process and the lack of access um, to a lawyer to, to know what her welfare is like. The best way for a government to handle these sorts of situations is, is hotly debated and contested. What's your view? Is a quiet, behind-the-scenes approach the smartest thing for the government to do at this point? Well, I think each case is a bit different, um, but certainly I think where China is concerned that doing things quietly and softly you know, doesn't always have the desired impact, maybe at the initial early stages when someone is arrested in the first you know, hours or days, um, but in this case, you know, we know that it's dragged on, you know, already for weeks. And I think there does need to be a very sort of firm response from the Australian government um, to, to just clarify, you know, the, the reasons why she is being detained um, and to put some questions to the Chinese government, you know, why they would not be, you know, respecting due process. I think there's even some questions about why um, consular staff have not had uh, physical access to visit her. That's only been allowed by video call. We don't know exactly why that is, um, but certainly I would be urging the Australian government to be doing everything it can um, to press very strongly uh, for, for her release. Just on another issue, Elaine, earlier this month, uh, as we reported here on Sky News, you were caught up in the foreign interference in universities debate when we saw the University of New South Wales being accused of bowing to Chinese pressure. It deleted posts of an article featuring some of your comments discussing human rights in Hong Kong. The government's now moving, as we know, to clamp down on university and also state government uh, deals, for that matter, with foreign powers. Just how else should we be ensuring that our universities don't succumb to threats or interference, particularly from China? Well, I think, you know, universities like to think that they are these, you know, bastions of free speech and, and academic freedom. But I think there are really unique challenges that are posed by the Chinese government and by large numbers of, you know, Chinese students, some of whom have faced intimidation, surveillance, harassment, sometimes from other students, sometimes from others um, in, in the community. And so I think it's really incumbent that universities take a long, hard look at the policies and procedures that they have in place and make sure that these are accessible and supportive uh, to Chinese students. And, you know, I'm very concerned that, you know, frankly, if another academic gets, you know, a, a press call on something contentious like Hong Kong or Xinjiang, you know, we don't want them to have to think twice about whether they're going to speak publicly on those issues. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, when we've seen this sort of very ferocious uh, response from some Chinese students, um, it really calls into question whether the existing safeguards in place are sufficient. And so I hope any parliamentary inquiry will not just look at the security ramifications um, of, you know, these uh, partnerships between China and Australia, 
but we'll actually also look at the rights of foreign students and how we can make sure that their rights to academic freedom um, are protected.